before we went to break, Megan, I meant to get to you. What's your thoughts on what's happening with McConnell? Yeah, I mean, this is a really fascinating moment in political history. I want to first start out by saying that none of this would even exist if Harry Reid hadn't gotten rid of the judicial filibuster. That's the whole reason why it's possible to possibly put a Supreme Court nominee through in such a short period of time. Um, one of my biggest concerns is if we have a contested election in 2020 and it's split even like there was in 2000, we have to have a full court ruling on it. So I think the potential for constitutional chaos is, is absolutely the most imminent it has been in my modern lifetime. Time. Mitch McConnell on this, There, I, I hear what you guys are saying about hypocrisy, and I, I hear it and receive it, but he is someone that has, he only cares about this. This is his, like, core issue. He does not want to run for president. He doesn't want to seek higher office. And if everyone thinks he hasn't been preparing for this exact scenario, I think they're just a, a little naive. No, no disrespect to anyone who thought that. I honestly think, because I've been talking about this all weekend, that Kavanaugh really changed the game for a lot of Republicans, myself included. I was completely radicalized by the experience of watching him testify. I mean, there were accusations of him being someone who had been part of a, a gang, rape gang, and, and accusations that were completely baseless. And it showed that Democrats on their side will do anything and everything to smear any conservative. Amy Coney Barrett is a hardcore Catholic, among yeah. other things. She has seven children. I completely expect her to be, if she is the nominee, to be slandered and maimed in a way we've never seen before. And I don't think that's what anyone wants. My last final point that I wanted to say is this turns the election back into battleground core meat and potatoes issues. And if you're pro-life like I am and 47 percent of the country is, it becomes a reason for you to support President Trump if you're someone that was wavering, if you if you didn't necessarily think there was going to be a seat up. And I think I think it's interesting to see what's going to happen going forward with the election, just in the sense that we're not going to be talking about coronavirus in the same way that we were before. We're not going to be talking about the Atlantic piece. We're only going to be talking about these meat and potato issues that really, really galvanize both bases. And as you pointed out, Joy, the fundraising that happened on, on the Democrat side is absolutely staggering. I believe it's over $100 million at this point raised since she died, since um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. Mm -hmm.